Aurora Simmons' career making custom jewelry and period costumes was shaped by two people. The first is a high school friend who had two things that interested Aurora. One was a place to party, and the other was chain mail. The second is the man who hired her to work in the shop above his garage, making components to go into space inside satellites. When she lost the space component job, Aurora turned to the skills she started learning in high school. Hello, I'm Craig Colby, owner of Colby Vision, a storytelling company that connects you to your customers. And this is The Business Heroes, a show where we talk to business owners about their journeys. And I am joined today by Aurora Simmons. Hi, Craig. Welcome. How are you doing? Great. Welcome to the show. Aurora is the uh, owner of Handmade Revolution, a uh, jewelry making company and a costume making company. Is that correct? Yeah, I make uh, modern and historical jewelry and I make uh, leather work, mostly historical. And uh, I do a lot of sewing, mostly, again, medieval costuming, but I've been sewing masks lately. Well, let's take a look at some of the uh, some of the work you've done. Tell us about this piece. So that's an engagement ring design. I mean, it doesn't have to be an engagement ring, but it looks nice as one. It's um, uh, created moissanite, which is a conflict-free stone that looks and acts a lot like a diamond um in a gold setting and tell us about this one this is a labradorite pendant um that i was inspired by the peacock feather because the labradorite has a labradorite has a beautiful um blue green iridescence and i i got really excited about that <laughs> so clearly you do beautiful work with jewelry um let's talk a little bit about that because obviously you didn't just, this just didn't appear, appear out of nowhere. This is the result of uh, all the experiences you've had in your life. When did you start making things with your hands? Well, I had a very um, arts focused early education, but um, in high school, I just got like wildly obsessed with sewing. And then um, I was lucky enough to become friends with some people who knew a chainmail guy. And uh, when I discovered chainmail, like making chainmail as a form of jewelry arts, I just was completely obsessed. And uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you obviously hung out with a different group of people than I did in high school, <laughs> a different type of group. None of my friends had chainmail. Um, what was your reaction when somebody brought out like a bunch of chainmail? Yeah, I was like, I just was so obsessed. I really, I. I can't stress that enough. Like, so my friend um, agreed to teach me kind of the basics of how it worked. Um, if I closed links for him, so it was like sort of an apprenticeship thing. And uh, as soon as I like got the basics, I went home and I like looked up different weaves and I would just like stay up way too late as a high school student, figuring out how to make different types of chain mail. And there was no like videos, it was all just pictures. So it was like hard to learn kind of through diagrams, um, and but it was really fun and I was really into it. And then I would do it in my classes. It was, uh, <laughs> so was you're, quite amusing. You're in class, you <laughs> chain mail. Yeah, I'm, I went to an alternative school. They were <laughs> permissive. They were good with that. Uh, what, yeah. what kind of things did you make? Um, like I started out with kind of bracelets and um, chokers and stuff, but then a friend of mine asked me to make her a bra and I made her a bra and that looked pretty cool. Um, and then, yeah, that's, that is not the person I first made the bra for, but that is a friend I went to high school with, Scarlett. Um, she's, a, she's a burlesque performer and she's on um, Facebook and Instagram as uh, Scarlett Black. And you should check out her stuff. <laughs> and, and that is uh, the type of thing that you made. Yeah, right? that, that's Correct? basically the same bra that I made for my friend, my other friend. And just, you know, while we're in the neighborhood for this, that is something else that you made as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Scarlett still occasionally does fire performances in that, even though I made it, I don't know, almost 10 years ago now. Oh, more than 10 years. Yeah, time flies. <laughs> <laughs> and so you started making things out of chain mail. Uh, when did you start to get good at it? Oh, um, I guess pretty quickly, but mostly because I was putting in so many hours um you know like i i learned pretty fast in general but also like when you really put a lot of time into something you can 
you know, if you, if you like it and you have an aptitude, you can get good pretty fast. Um, so yeah, I, I, yeah, and I, I, I like picked up a bunch of different weaves quite quickly. And then I, I just was obsessed with like exploring what I could do with it. I made some bigger pieces. Um, when did you know that you were good at this? I guess pretty right away. I, I don't know that I knew I was good at it per se. I, I knew that I loved it. You know, I, I think being good at it wasn't kind of how I approached it. It was more just like, this is so great. I want to do this all the time. And when did you start making money at it? So pretty right away. Like, um, again, I, I wouldn't stop. So like I had to do something with all these pieces I was making. So, you know, people offered to buy them. I sold a bracelet to a teacher of mine. I sold the bra. Um, and then I was working at back of Phoenix at the time. And it was, it was on Yonge street and it was right down the road from uh, northbound leather. They've both moved, but, um, and I just like wandered in there one day and I was like, do you guys want to consign my stuff? And they did. So, um, so I actually sold with earthbound leather for a while too. And that was pretty cool. And, uh, what kind of thing did you sell in your first sales to northbound leather? So I made like, again, bracelets and chokers. Like I had a, uh, I would use rubber rings. So things would like stretch. And then I, uh, I don't know, about a year or two after I'd been selling stuff with them, I got an order for um, a pair of chainmail chaps. <laughs> so they were like rubber and steel chaps. I never got to see them on whoever bought them, but they took a long time to make, <laughs> I can tell you. <laughs> but you're making things and, and making money, uh, yeah. and you're still in high school, just after yeah, you started yeah. out. For sure. And you love it. Absolutely, yeah. So. <laughs> You finish high school and uh, it's time to think about what you're going to do next. Uh, what did you do after high school? Um, yeah, so I was like pretty stoked about making stuff. I did a little um, jewelry making program at um, like a short little class at Harborfront. And uh, I was like, this is amazing. I definitely want to do this. And there was a certain amount of pressure for me to go to school right out of high school from my mom. Um, so I decided to go to a jewelry arts program at George Brown. And um, how did you respond to that? To the program? Yes. Uh, it was it was great. It was very technical. Um, it was three years. I think I was like one of the youngest people in it because a lot of my classmates joined, you know, as a second career in their right. 30s. Um, but it was really fun. Um, I loved what I was learning. You know, I had some great teachers. Uh, yeah. So you've got an education. You've uh, learned the technical skills of how to make how to make jewelry. What happened next? Um. Of <laughs> what happened next? Yeah. So I graduated. I wasn't really thinking I was going to be doing it full time. That wasn't, you know, I, I knew and still know that it's hard to make a living as an artist. So I was thinking, you know, I'll just do it part time and see where it goes. Um, I was lucky enough to get a really amazing job. So I worked at Back of Phoenix selling books, which was an amazing job. And that's um, a very famous science fiction and fantasy bookstore here in Toronto. Yeah. There are Anybody right. who's written a book like in that genre goes there to uh, have a book launch. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and they are selling right now if you need some books. Um, yeah, I worked for them for about seven years and it was like a family. It was just amazing. So they um, have a loyal customer base that comes in there all the time. You get to know the customers. Yeah, yeah. And so through this, I, uh, I was, um, I had made friends with somebody who approached, who had a small burgeoning satellite component manufacturer company. And he asked me to come to work for him because he thought like, since I had the kind of fine motor schools skills of jewelry that they would transfer over to the, the basically like tiny soldering that you do for, for aerospace. So, um, yeah, I started doing that and it was also amazing. It was a really fun job. It was me and another jeweler that he hired. So you go to school to make jewelry and you get a job making components for satellite that are going into space. Yeah, it was a bit of an unexpected twist, <laughs> but and, it was uh, it was great. And where did you go to work? Well, initially we were above a garage, which was hilarious. Um, <laughs> you know, we uh, we had a um, 
We had a... I mean, it just kind of blows my mind that uh, the things that are going up into space are basically being made in Fonzie's apartment. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we like the company got bigger faster and we moved like I think after about two years or something. But but yeah, it was very amusing. And at that beginning, in the beginning, like when we would put the um, the air compressor on, like the whole floor would shake. <laughs> uh, anyway. And what did you get out of that job? Um, it was really fun. It was, you know, it was a great, um, like income wise, it was great. Um, uh, and it, it gave me kind of the opportunity to also be still doing jewelry. And, uh, I went to university for a little while as well. And that, um, that job helped with that because I could do it part time, but still be making like a decent amount of money. What did you study at school? Um, history and philosophy. So even the, the history and philosophy that you're taking, the history at least, is feeding into the type of jewelry that you like to make. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, I had started reenacting in 2007, so kind of congruent with all of these things right after I got out of school. And uh, like, I can't say that I was necessarily obsessed with history before I got into reenacting. I was always into history, but um, reenacting really like cemented all of that it kind of brought together all of my existing hobbies like making stuff um sewing and then camping which i was already super into and martial arts which is kind of a whole other thread we're gonna get to we're gonna get to that stuff later because that's really yeah. interesting too so at this point in your life you are out of university you are working full-time making satellite components you're also you know taking something Pardon. you love in university uh got some and you're making jewelry and working at the bookstore so it sounds like you're busy, but yeah. it's busy with things you love and everything is going well in your life, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it didn't stay that way, did it? Never does. <laughs> <laughs> it never does. Uh, what uh, What did you run into next? Well, um, when I was 23, I was diagnosed with um, uh, autoimmune arthritis and that was like a big adjustment <laughs> um it was like pretty bad for the first little while and it was clear to me that like i was going to be sort of more limited in what i could do and um i was still in university at that point but i decided that i really wanted to focus on jewelry um that you know it was kind of like when something bad happens it really like makes you think about what you value the most so um possibly an insane decision but i decided <laughs> to focus on that and like so the jewelry part-time and um the satellite job um i think i had quit at baca at that point just just because it wasn't i didn't have the time to do it not because i didn't love it um so yeah that was sort of a weird uh adjustment in how i thought about my life and how but, did um, how did the uh the illness affect the way you worked uh well for the first little while like it was mostly just affecting my ability to walk and sleep um and like do kind of more physical stuff but then it did start kind of getting into my hands and wrists but i was uh i was lucky because i kind of got a really really good treatment before it could get bad enough that it started to really interfere with my work and while you're dealing with this uh what happened with your satellite job well, um, yeah, so I was laid off, which was, um, you know, but like they were, they got slow and they didn't have enough work. So um, they laid me off because that gave me an opportunity, which was um, there was a small business program that in Ontario for people who had been laid off and I was able to access it because I had been laid off. So I, um, it seemed, sorry, <clears throat> it seemed like a really cool way to kind of pursue the jewelry side of my life and so i uh it, and it was a lot of work to get in but i mm. uh, pursued that and what did you learn from that course um uh it was like kind of business coaching um we did like we wrote a business plan we kind of spent a lot of time budgeting and planning your marketing strategy and um and it was also great because i met a lot of interesting people i had my own coach who was great um yeah it was it was pretty fun so it took you from being someone who could make jewelry into someone who could start to uh, build some business structures and market yourself as well correct yeah yeah that was the idea and, and once you're out of that 
um, you've dedicated yourself to, you know, a passion. Uh, what happened with your business at that point? What were you doing? Well, I was, um, I was still working a little bit part time. I worked, um, I worked at my friend's piano store doing piano polishing a little bit. That was fun and weird. Um, I worked uh, at a great clothing store for a little while called Arietta Boutique on the Danforth. That was actually very fun, less weird, but um, yeah. And but that was those were just like one day a week to kind of tide me over because mostly I was starting to make enough money off jewelry and sewing. And how did your how did the illness affect you at this point? Um, it was just trying to think the timeline. I mean, it's been about the same for a while. Like I have a lot of kind of fatigue and kind of low level pain. Um, it doesn't really interfere with my ability function. It's just like things are harder. Right. Uh, yeah. And it's hard enough to launch your own business and work a couple of jobs, but dealing with that too, um, is just another level of things to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> whatever you have, just like put a rock on your shoulder and then, <laughs> yeah. But you make beautiful jewelry. As a matter of fact, uh, the way we met, I was producing a TV series called History in the Making and you made a beautiful signet ring um, for us. Uh, so we found you just through reputation and through the things you did. So obviously the work you're doing is reaching people and, and uh, what kind of customer do you have? Um, well, I, I definitely have like some great um, historical reenactor customers. Like that's a community I'm part of and I make stuff for that community. So that, that works well, um, you know, and then in terms of my modern purchasers, like I think I have a lot of collectors, a few collectors, um, you know, people who really love my work and they'll buy something, you know, for Christmas, for birthdays. Um, and then a couple like I have one client who just collects rings who I love dearly. Um, she has a really impressive collection of rings that I made now, which is great because I really like to make rings. So it's working very well. It's like a symbiotic. <laughs> um, yeah, well, that's where you, you want to have is somebody who loves what you do. Uh, so you can make for them. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the reenacting you do. Um, here's a picture of you um, sewing. My kit has gotten a lot better since then. <laughs> How old is this picture? That's, oh man, that's probably right at the beginning of our medieval. So that would be like 2010, no, 2012, 2013 maybe. And what kind of things do you like to make? Um, I love to make belts. Um, medieval folks were, were like very blingy. And um, so they wore a lot of really fancy belts, which are super fun to make. So then I, I do the leather work and then I like make a lot of fittings and they're pretty cool. And do you make most of what you wear? I make all of what I wear. Yeah, except the shoes. Shoes are annoying. And I don't make my own armor. Well, there's a little <laughs> bit of armor. Uh, what, can yeah, you yeah. what can you tell us about that picture? um that's my partner chris and me we were i think that's probably 2015 or 2014. um i actually had borrowed that breastplate i have my own now um and yeah i think we'd been just fighting we were doing some medieval martial arts uh we had a big tournament that day it was really hot it was fun uh we'll get to that in a minute um but i want to show one other picture here uh another this is this is a costume you've made um yeah uh, my hood the hood i'm wearing is uh i embroidered it all it's wool i didn't make my hat i don't make hats i should say and that's christian who uh um got me into reenacting and helps me run our reenactment unit and um what can you tell me about christian i mean uh he obviously is a very important person in your life yeah absolutely um so i met him uh through baca also and uh because he's a science fiction he's a not science fiction yet, but uh, he's a fantasy and historical fiction author. And um, he found out that I liked camping and he and making stuff. And he was like, you should come reenact. And he was so right. Um, we started actually in Revolutionary War, but we've moved. We went through mm -hmm. classical Greece and now we're in medieval 14th century. Um, yeah. And he also did. He had like a lot of time spent doing fencing, like modern 
and historical fencing. And I had a background in Jeet Kune Do, which is a kind of all purpose martial arts that has stick fighting and and hand to hand and stuff. So we started, uh, yeah, we oh, started. Hand -hand. Yeah, and I, <laughs> yeah, that was a good day. We started, um, he and I were like sparring, playing around with sword stuff. And then he started um, wanting to write medieval historical novels. And he was like, we should learn some medieval martial arts, Aurora. And I was like, sure, why not? So we got some long swords. And um, yeah, that became a whole thing. Like uh, it's been about 10 years now. Uh, we've been doing 14th century longsword. We have a little class and um, we have events regularly and we host a yearly um, fundraiser that we call Deed of Alms um, to raise money for kind of needy folks in Toronto. And, uh, you know, it's a kind of all encompassing. It's become my whole life, <laughs> you know, re between the reenacting and the martial arts. Yeah, because this it's very clear that this just isn't a job for you. This is a whole way of, of living. You make jewelry from a period, you make costumes from a period. You not only go to reenactments to dress and act like the period, but you learn how to fight for that period. Yeah. I mean, uh, a lot of reenacting is very, um, based on kind of war and I mean certainly war is part of history and we love martial arts so we love to do martial arts but you know our reenacting is about more than just that we also do cooking and um you know material culture clothing sewing uh singing we try to you know recreate every aspect every fun aspect of life from the past not so much the you know dying of the plague yeah we can <laughs> We can skip that. Yeah. I think people have had enough of a glimpse yeah. of uh, what that yep, kind yep. of lifestyle is like without having to reenact that. Right. Uh, what is it you love about this? The historical reenacting? All of the things you're doing. What is it that speaks to you? Whew. Um, I mean, I feel like I'm sort of compelled to do all these things. Like I was compelled to make stuff kind of the minute I figured out that I could do it. And, um, it's, you know, history is full of craft because, you know, people needed things in their lives and the only way to have things was to make them. So um, it all kind of dovetails to me for like a very human experience of being alive and um, interacting with objects. Um, in the modern world, a lot of our stuff is kind of mass manufactured in factories, so we don't have that deep connection to how things are made and um, the kind of complexities that go into it. And so that's that's really resonant for me because um, I feel like that's a deeply important part of the human experience. So like art, but also crafts, you know what I mean? Yes, and you uh, are someone who feels very deeply connected with your crafts. And you mentioned it briefly earlier, but I want to bring it up now because we are in the middle of the COVID crisis right now, or who knows where we are in it. I don't want to say that, but the <laughs> hospital in our, in the neighborhood, we live in the same neighborhood, uh, asked for a call out for cloth masks and you started making masks and asked for donations for materials to make, to make masks. Can you tell me a little bit about the masks we're seeing here? Yeah, I made, um, yeah, so I donated a bunch and then I've, I've uh, sold a bunch for, to people kind of in the neighborhood and in my community who needed them. Um, you know, I think at this point, the Canadian government is telling everybody that it's great to wear fabric masks if you can. Um, it's super helpful. So yeah, I've been making them and donating them. It's, you know, something I can do easily with the skills that I have and the, and I have so much fabric scrapped. So it's been really great <laughs> using up the fabric scrap and, you know, knowing that it's a useful thing I can do. Well, it's been great for us too. I bought some for every member of our family and we were early adopters in that. <laughs> thanks to you. Thanks to you. We had masks right away. So the future of handmade revolution. Uh, you're already making beautiful jewelry and beautiful clothing. You're doing well selling it. Uh, what do you want to do next? Um, well, it's, you know, it's a bit strange times uh, with COVID, but um, you know, one of the things I've been really trying to work on is um, getting more kind of larger events with more artisans. I did a craft, I ran a craft show last uh, December that went really well. And I'm hoping to do more events like that when things 
become a little bit more normal. But in the meantime, I've been doing also a podcast where I interview artisans um, just about kind of their lives and their work. And that's been so fun. I'm, uh, I've been really enjoying it. <laughs> and uh, again, just to go back to something we looked at uh, earlier in the, in the show, you are offering a discount for one month from the time we recorded this for anybody who wants to, to buy something from you. Yeah, yeah. So that will be um, active on my website for the next 30 days. Um, just put it in at checkout and you'll get 15% off. And your website is right here. Mm -hmm. um, yep, yep, yep. So I encourage everybody. I uh, got to know Aurora a little bit through the show that we've done, but I can tell you that she does just stunning work. Um, we did a six minute segment on the uh, signet ring that you made. And we were a little worried because it, that everything took place in a very small uh, contained <laughs> space that if this was gonna be dynamic enough. But that was a beautiful section of the show that really showed off the amazing work that you do. And nice. I can tell uh, anybody watching this that this is something that you do from the heart and from the soul. And uh, when people buy something from you, they are getting something that is uh, authentic through and through. So I encourage everybody to, you know, check out the stuff she does. And if you like it, uh, you're getting it from uh, the real deal right off the top. That's very nice. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Aurora, thank you so much. She is Aurora Simmons. She makes jewelry and costuming and clothing from uh, all different periods. Uh, does great stuff. Handmaderevolution.org. Uh, please feel free to check it out. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. It was really fun. It was a great time. <laughs> and now... That's it. The Business Heroes wants to hear your story. Contact me at craig at colbyvision.net. I guarantee your story will sound epic with this cool music underneath it. Colby Vision can help you find and share your story. Writing, video, we do it all. We can also show you how to do your own simple videos and teach you how to do interviews for a podcast. Thanks to Dave White for the editing, Tim Vesely for the music, and Kevin Francisco for the graphics. And thanks for watching The Business Heroes. We'll see you next time for another exciting adventure.